Alrighty, so today we're going to take a look at something pretty different, something I haven't looked at before, and it's this. This is the Argus F7 flight controller from Axis Flying. And it's a pretty interesting flight controller. Now this is the 55 amp version of this stack, but it also comes with a 65 amp version as well. And I think that this is best geared for somebody new to the hobby that doesn't want to do a lot of soldering. All right, so first things first, I want to go ahead and thank the guys over there at Axis Flying for sending this out so I can take a look at. I saw this posted in a Facebook uh, group and I just simply said, hey, that looks pretty cool. And they reached out to me and uh, offered to send one. So my opinions will still be uh, very unbiased. I don't care if things are sent to me. Obviously, I think most of you guys pretty much know how it goes here. If I like something, I say I like it. If I don't like it, I say I don't like it. Now, I will say I am somebody who does fly fat tack. I do fly kiss. So I'm going to try to forget all of those things and just focus on the beta flight aspect since this does run beta flight. All right, let's go ahead and unbox this and see what we get inside. All right, so taking off the sheet, looks like we get flight controller and ESC and let's open this thing up. Holy smokes, that looks crazy. This is probably the best looking flight controller ESC combo that I have seen in a long, long time. Wow, that looks really nice. Looks super pro. By the way, this is the Argus F7 Pro version. They do make an Argus F7 that doesn't have this heat sink, but we'll touch more on that a little bit later. Let's go ahead and start off by taking a look at the ESC. I think that's the first thing we should look at. And looking over the ESC, it doesn't feel too much heavier, even though it looks incredibly heavy. Bring it up here to the camera so you can get a good look at it. It's got this nice little heatsink enclosing the entire ESC. It is a chunky ESC in comparison to other ESCs that are on the market. It is completely sealed though all the way across the board which is nice it just has the uh, pin connector that connect over to the flight controller that's really it the only soldering that you're going to do to this particular unit is for the motor pads and then obviously your power that is really all you'll need on the underside of it it is um pretty bland i don't think there's anything really under there seems to be pretty clean and I actually really not 100% sure which way this would sit. I, th I, I would imagine it probably sits like this, but since the motor numbering is here, I think it probably will sit like this in your frame. I I'll have to take a look at it in beta flight. Either way, it's not a big deal. You can always reverse that. All right, let's take a look at the flight controller. So looking over the flight controller, much of the same, we have that nice enclosed housing, that heat sink sitting on top of here. And uh, I will tell you, just picking this up, it just screams premium. It's not what I'm accustomed to as I'm handling FPV electronics. Uh, that's for damn sure. We have a USB-C plug here on the side to connect to Betaflight. I really dig the fact that a lot of companies are moving to USB-C. We do have six UART ports on here. Now, all of the UART ports are going to be connected via cables, plug and play. So there's no soldering directly to the actual flight controller itself. And I think that's one of the things that will appeal most to new beginners, like beginners that are just starting out. They don't want to solder directly to their electronics. Um, I could totally understand that. I was I was there once and I, I always feared having the solder receivers or GPS to my flight controller and feared that I would I would you know splatter something somewhere else. So uh, nice to see some plug and play designs. This also makes building things a little bit easier. They have obviously your digital port, the port for your receiver. This is also X8 capable. So if you wanted to put this in a cine lifter, you can totally do that. Um, which I think is pretty cool. There's a reset button here under the USB-C, and then you have some status indicators. Uh, you have a nine volt VCC and then a five volt regulator as well. So all of that's outlined pretty nicely. So yeah, overall, I will say this is pretty sweet as far as the setup goes. This is a really nice setup. 
Um, some key specs, obviously it comes in 65 amp or 55 amp ESC. This is the 55 amp version. This is also IP54, so it's waterproof and dust proof. However, again, submerge this at your own risk, but just know that this can get wet and you're probably gonna to be totally fine. You'll still need to conformal coat any of your pad ends here, but for the most part, you shouldn't have to worry about this if this gets misted or if it gets hit with some light rain. You can't speak for any of the other components you may put into your build, but as far as the ESC and flight controller goes, you are good to go. This is sporting an F7 processor, so should be pretty good there. It should be plenty quick. I don't think really anything's taking advantage of much more. But yeah, there it is. F7 flight controller from Axis Flying. So now what we need to do is go ahead and put this into a build um, and then test it. Now, I do want to make mention that Axis Flying did send me a frame. They sent me the Manta frame. However, I ended up buying a Manta frame to put their stack in. I figured if I was going to be reviewing an Axis stack, I should be putting it into an Axis frame. So I went ahead and ordered one from uh, Race Day Quads. So I'll have an extra Manta frame that I will be giving away after um, this video goes live. Just gonna go over the components that we're going to use for this build. So I went ahead and ordered these AMAX motors. These are the uh, Performante, I guess I'm saying that right, Performante, uh, 2207, 1750 KV motors. Um, these motors, I have to say, these things are just absolutely stunning. This is not a motor review video, but uh, these motors, absolutely stunning. Probably one of the most well-made motors I have ever held in my hand. They look absolutely stunning. So pretty excited to put that in there. So we're gonna use these motors. We are going to put an O3 air unit in this frame. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so AccuSync uh, 3 air unit. Um, we're not gonna use any receivers. So we're gonna fly this directly off of the uh, air unit. I know I said that's a bad idea, but I wanna try to keep this build as clean as possible. And then we'll also see what everything weighs um, with this stack. Because like I said, this stack is not the lightest stack, but it's not the heaviest stack that I've felt either. And just to give you an understanding on how heavy the flight controller and ESC is as a combo. Let's go ahead and throw it on the scale. So you're looking at 50 grams for the ESC flight controller combo. If we just looked at the flight controller, you're at, well, let's see. Let's make sure we tear that out. Let's go ahead and see. That is 19 grams on just the flight controller. And then on the ESC by itself, you're looking at 31 grams or so. You know, take that for what it is. I haven't calibrated my cocaine scale in a little while, so that could be off. So mileage may vary. All right, let's go ahead and get this put into a build and then we'll test fly it and I'll give you some final thoughts on the Argus F7 stack. Alrighty, so here it is, all complete. This is the Axis Flying Manta and the Argus F7 stack. So it is a little bit windy, so you may hear some wind noise in the audio from the GoPro. You may be even hearing wind noise in the audio from the mic, but we're gonna go ahead and test this out. Now, while I was in the studio, I tried to do a quick tune to it, just like some normal presets I normally do, but I found that the motors were getting a little bit warmer than I felt comfortable with just sitting there hovering. So I'm hoping it doesn't happen as I'm flying, but we'll find out. Um, I'm basically gonna do some DVR recording. I got the GoPro on there. I'm not really gonna care about what it looks like to the O3 air unit. I'm not gonna record to the air unit itself because I don't care about that. This is more or less a freestyle quad. Um, so we're just really focusing on the stack itself and how the stack performs on the stock pits. All right, let's get this thing up in the air.
All right, so I'm just gonna bring it in here. I just wanna feel the motors. You know, a new build, you just never know. Yeah, motors are staying cool. All right, so that should be good. Let's, uh, I think I'm gonna switch this to four by three. I'm not, let me see, what do I got this in? 1080p. Let me switch it over to 120 FPS, aspect ratio, four by three, I think. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm used to flying anyways. Not bad. I mean, this is just all on the default. I don't even think I tuned the, I didn't do anything to the rates either. It's flying pretty good actually. I could do a little bit of tuning to this to really dial it in, but I think it's flying pretty decent on the default. Obviously, the biggest thing is the rates. I'm obviously not flying as well as I would normally try to with these rates, but uh, honestly, it's not bad. It's also very, very windy, so I'm sure that's not uh, making things easy for this, but uh, let's see, we're at 21. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in. All right, so the biggest thing I was looking for in that flight was making sure that the motors were not getting hot. Like I said, when I was just doing a hover test back at the office, uh, the motors were getting warm, but on the default PIDs right now, as it sits, the motors are not warm at all. They feel really cool to the touch. And honestly, it flew decent. I could get this to be a lot more locked in, obviously. But um, I think for just, you know, for the first test flight and whatnot, it did absolutely fine. I mean, it's a fantastic flight controller and ESC combo. It's, it's very compact in there. It's hard to, hard to really um, convey this, but that flight controller is almost right on top of the ESC. Don't mind my soldering. I, I mean, I, I soldered like uh, uh, a, a, a schmuck bag, but um, anyways, it's, it's, you know, it's not bad. Like, it's not touching. It's got, you know, enough dampening to make sure that the gyro stays, um, stays clean. Um, I mean, overall, I mean, everything's plug and play. I'm using the DJI transmission uh, along with the DJI RC, obviously. Um, not a huge fan of this combo. I, I feel like I'm noticing some latency there. But um, anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll leave a link for this uh, stack in here. I just wanted to give it a good old college try. Put it together, do a build, and actually really fly it instead of just review it from my bench and talk about it. I want to actually see it actually perform. So, all right, that's gonna do it for this video. Stay original. 
I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message, homie, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my success has only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in check.